I'm the Executive Director here at PACE. I'm Ursula Robinson, and it is such a pleasure to be speaking with you all this evening. Uh, for those who are new to this call and this format, let me just give you a few reminders. Please, please, please put your phone on mute unless you're talking. When you get ready to speak, take your phone off of mute. This helps with the background noise by keeping your phone on mute, and that way we can hear the people who are speaking very well. So again, put your phone on mute unless you are speaking to help with the sound. And secondly, I want to remind everyone that these sessions are recorded and we're actually putting them on YouTube so that other participants and families and the general community can hear what we talked about and can hear what's going on at PACE. So if you would, for confidence, confidential, confidentiality's sake, please do not say your name. Uh, do not say the name of the participant. If you're a family member and if you are speaking for yourself, please do not say your name. And that just helps us protect um, your confidentiality. All right. So once again, I heard some people join after I started talking. I'm Ursula Robinson, the Executive Director of Pace of the Triad. It is indeed a pleasure to have you with us. Please mute your phones. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I have very little to do tonight, and I'm actually quite surprised at that. Uh, I don't have anything to tell you guys because I've got a cast of experts on the line to tell you all the good stuff that you need to hear tonight. So I want to introduce them, and then, of course, they will tell you their names again once they get started. Uh, the first person I want to introduce is Miss Adria Smith. Adria has been here at Pace of the Triad for seven years. That's right, seven years. And Adria has some important information that I want her to share with you about a survey from the federal government. So if you would please give Adria your attention and she'll speak with you briefly and then we'll open up the lines in case you have questions for Adria before we move to the next speaker. Adria? Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for calling into the town hall tonight. What I have to say is pretty brief, but it's very important. You may have already gotten a letter in the mail um, in regards to what's called the Haas M or the Health Outcomes Survey Modified. That's H-O-S dash M. So this is a survey that is um, contracted by a Medicare and it just is a way for us to be able to measure everyone's true uh, ability uh, and what they are, are able to do so that we can better help to serve you and to tailor our services um, for our uh, participants in our communities. Uh, so whenever you get this in the mail um, and we'll be having our social workers follow up with uh, our participants and our caregivers, and you'll be getting stuff uh, in the MyPace newsletters. Um, so you'll hear about the survey probably for the next few months, but it will come to you in the mail and it will be a questionnaire. There are 19 questions and it should take about 20 minutes for you to complete. But if you need any assistance in completing the survey, then your PACE team, your home care coordinator or your social worker, um, they are here to help you uh, to, to read the survey um, and to complete the survey uh, and to get the survey mailed back into Medicare. Um, so we're here for you to help with that. So please just really uh, what I need for everyone to do at this time is just to keep your eyes peeled. So you should be getting that survey probably in the next two to three weeks. And again, whenever you get it in the mail, it will say Haas M, that's H-O-S dash M. And if you need help completing that, please just give us here a, a call at PACE and we'll be happy to help. That's it, Ursula. Thank you, Adria. Does anyone have any questions about what Adria just reported? Uh, 
Great. All right. Well, we're going to move on to our next guest speaker, and that is Miss Lucia Morrow. Miss Lucia Morrow is the center manager. A lot of people like to call her the superintendent or the principal. Uh, Lucilia is uh, second in command after me, and we are delighted to have her with us this evening. Lucilia has been with the organization for seven years, and she's going to talk with you and give you an update on kind of how things are going, uh, what things are looking like at the Adult Day Health Center where we do our games and activities and meals. She'll give you an update on what's going on in transportation and some other things as well. So I will let Lucilia take it from here. Thank you, Ursula. Again, my name is Lucilia Mero, and I have the honor to serve here as center manager. And I just want to give a few updates about our efforts as we continue to create an ecosystem of safety for our participants and team members. Right now, our social workers and home care coordinators continue to call and check in with participants and caregivers on a routine basis. COVID-19 screening calls also continue with participants and caregivers when there are scheduled transports. These screenings help us to rule out any concerns of potential COVID-19 exposure, travel, symptoms, or recent gatherings of 10 or more people. When screenings meet our safety guidelines, we proceed with scheduling transportation. Van occupancy at this time is limited to no more than three participants per trip based on the size of the van. At this time, caregivers are not permitted on the vans as part of our COVID-19 precautions. Vans are also cleaned and sanitized between trips with EPA approved cleaning solutions per CDC guidelines. Prior to loading a participant onto a van, Drivers are also conducting screenings that include temperature checks, exposure questions. They also sanitize participants' hands and provide masks if they don't have one. Oftentimes, participants with dementia or other cognitive delays may not want to wear masks or they may wear them improperly. As healthcare professionals, we understand this and will gently redirect them and assist them with putting their mask on properly throughout the day. Since we reopened on July the 6th, I have had the pleasure of witnessing paid staff assisting participants do just this with such grace, patience, and composure. Please know that we will encourage all participants to wear a mask, and we are focused on six feet of physical distancing to help offset any concerns with participants who have trouble with wearing masks. As of today, all participants are seated one to a table and all PACE members are required to wear masks. In addition to this, some caregivers may wonder when their family member can return to PACE. Right now, we are assessing attendance based on three levels. At this time, we remain at level one for attendance purposes, and your social worker will contact you when we transition to level two, which is based on adult day health center support and supervision, as well as COVID-19 precautions per CDC guidelines and space limitations in the center. As it relates to enrollment of new participants and the approval of adult day health center attendance days, those approved days are based on a new participant's care plan schedule with all participants having that once they enroll into our program. Keep in mind that new participants to PACE will still go through the process to determine their eligibility for level one, two, or three for adult day health attendance. At this time, attendance at the center remains restricted according to Governor Cooper's recommendations of Phase Two guidelines for the state of North Carolina. Again, newly enrolled participants are all assessed like currently enrolled participants for Level 1, 2, or 3 attendance eligibility. We would like to emphasize that safety, health, and the well-being of our participants, caregivers, and their families PACE team members 
and their families is our primary goal during these unprecedented times. And we will continue to communicate changes in a timely manner. Let me ask um, those of you who are not speaking, if you would, make sure your phone is on mute. That's why we're getting the background noise now, is because somebody's phone is not muted. So if you would please take a minute, whoever's phone is not muted, and put it on mute. Thank you so much. Lucilia, are you done, or did you have anything else to add? That's all I have. Thank you, Lucilia. We're going to move on to Dr. Culler. And at the end, um, Dr. Culler is our last speaker, and we will get um, questions at the end. Uh, Dr. Culler, many of you, I'm sure, know him. He's been with the organization for nine years. So he's definitely one of my senior employees. Um, and so I am grateful to have him with us to update us on COVID and testing and medical concerns. Dr. Culler? Thank you, Ursula, and it's great to talk to you all. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Um, COVID continues in our world and our nation and our state and our community. Uh, in North Carolina, we have had approximately 2,500 deaths, and then in the nation, we've had over 170,000 deaths. Just looking locally, in Guilford County, there's been 160. Uh, Rockingham County has been a um, a little bit better at six, just six people have died. This is something that's uh, very serious and uh, we continue to um, struggle with the pandemic. It's not going away, but it does tend to fluctuate in intensity. Uh, we've had a flare up in June, another flare up in July. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, things have been easing off a little bit locally, but it's still present and still uh, a, a threat. Um, a lot of it depends on what's going on in the community. So we know that the colleges are getting back together. And when colleges and people start getting back together, we may see another surge of COVID in the community. And then as you may know, Guilford County Schools has been delayed in their in-person attendance and that is scheduled to start in October. And so that's another time that we might see a little bit of a surge. Uh, good news though is that the hospital is doing much better in treating people with COVID. Um, they've gained experience and we understand some things that work and some things that don't work. And their treatment of COVID-19 patients is improving. And the people, uh, people are doing better. There's been fewer deaths. And so we're thankful for that. Um, I want to let you know, for the long-term horizon, we're one of vaccine. That's really going to be key to getting this pandemic under control. Uh, you may have heard in the news that we have started, our nation has started what we call uh, stage three or phase three uh, testing. And that's where we uh, test thousands and thousands and thousands of folks. We give them a vaccine. Uh, some people get a placebo and then we see how people do for the next few months, and that takes several months to complete. I know that they are recruiting folks locally to see if any volunteers to get the vaccine. And if there's interest in this uh, among uh, the people who are listening to this uh, talk, uh, you can contact me after the program, and I can perhaps uh, get you hooked up with uh, the medical centers that are running those, uh, those studies. Um, as you know, uh, nursing homes are have been particularly hit hard with the virus. And nursing homes that have been affected by COVID, they are now having the routine where staff and patients or residents or participants, everyone is tested weekly to try to get a handle and try to isolate people that test positive for the COVID virus. So they're looking very intensely at the nursing homes to try to control the outbreak there. Uh, so we're thankful for that. Um, if uh, the people on the call are interested actually in getting free COVID testing, they're actually doing free COVID testing uh, in the community. Um, there's one uh, tomorrow, for example, at Daystar Church. Uh, there's another one on Saturday at Mount Zion United Church of God. 
at another free testing site and on Thursday, and also at Daystar. And if at the end uh, someone's interested in getting the details about that, they can put that, uh, they can ask that in one of the uh, question periods. Um, and another thing that we've done here at PACE to, for added safety, uh, our uh, staff, in addition to wearing surgical masks when around any participant, are also wearing face shields. And that's really just to add an extra level of safety. And um, if you see that, I want you to understand that uh, that is really to keep all parties as safe as possible. Um, and I think those are the main things I wanted to touch on right now. You may have questions, and I, I'm, I'm certainly uh, open to trying to answer as many of those questions as I can. And I will hand this off to uh, Ursula. Thank you, Dr. K. Thank you so much for that. We also have another uh, very seasoned staff member on the call with us. She's in the background kind of making sure everything runs smoothly. So I want to at least uh, acknowledge and recognize Ms. Nidra Baldwin, who's been with the organization for over nine years. Thank you, Nidra, for all that you do as well. So uh, now is the time that for you guys to ask questions. Uh, you've heard from Adria about the survey from the federal government. You've heard from Lucilia about different things that's going on in the Adult Day Health Center and transportation. And then, of course, we just heard from Dr. Culler about COVID updates. So when you get ready to talk, don't forget to take your phone off of mute. And while someone else is talking or asking a question, please make sure that your phone is on mute. All right. Who would like to ask the first question? Right. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, I was uh, going to uh, ask, are we still going to get uh, flu shots when the time comes? Are you still going to get flu shots when the time comes? Dr. Culler? Yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. And getting vaccinated for influenza is important every year. But even more important this year, um, there's a couple of reasons why it's so important is because the flu can sometimes make it difficult to understand if the person has a flu or the COVID. And this can help if we can lower the number of people getting influenza, we can uh, help with their medical system and provide more accurate care for participants and patients. So in terms of getting the vaccine, it's going to be perfectly safe. And uh, all of our staff, are, as every year, we all get it as part of our, we're trying to keep participants safe, so we're going to start it routinely. Uh, and then October is really the prime month, so we'll start the second half of September, and uh, we're going to uh, determine either people come in to the PACE Center to have it done, or we may actually, the community, do vaccination in people's homes. Uh, we're working on that. The details still have to be. Um, you'd also reason to get the flu shot is that uh, a, a rare chance that a person might get both influenza and COVID at the same time would be really bad. So, getting the flu vaccine will help prevent uh, that chance. So just an extra level of safety, and um, and we definitely want to con continue to encourage that, and we will. Thank you for that question. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That was an excellent question. Excellent question. Who has another question? I do. Okay. And before you speak, let me just remind everyone that if you are not talking, please put your phone on mute. Uh, I can hear someone breathing. Um, if you would just put your phone on mute, that would help us out a great deal so we can hear everyone. Put your phone on mute unless you're talking. Okay, go ahead. Do you have to make an appointment to get the flu shot there at Pace? Okay, Dr. Kohler. Yeah, uh, Jackie is our clinic nurse, and she's uh, in the process right now of figuring out, you know, what is the priority and protocol of, of doing that. Um, appointments that might be possible might be one of the uh, things that she'll choose, but. We don't have the answers to that question yet. We'll know more in a couple of weeks, and we'll make sure that we communicate that um, 
in multiple formats to make sure everybody's aware when and where to get the vaccination. We're talking about in September and then into October. Um, and in terms of appointments or how it's going to be done, I'm sure there'll be some organizations that, but I don't have details on that at this time. Thank you. Okay, who has another question? May I please ask Dr. Kohler, uh, will the residents of a nursing home be counted from there in the U.S. Census and also Will they receive a ballot for voting there? Yes, and, and um, I do not know that for certain as, as a medical director, but just knowing it as an Amer American citizen, I, uh, everyone in the United States, whether they're in a nursing home or wherever they may be, is counted in the census and needs to be counted in the census. And um, I think everyone has a right to vote, uh, whether they're in a nursing home or not. Um, that, that, that's my knowledge about the situation there. Okay, thank and you. I agree with you, Dr. Culler. I believe that the nursing home helps make arrangements for absentee ballots or for uh, the residents to actually cast, cast ballots, um, ballots there at the facility. But the best way to get that answer is to ask someone who works there because I imagine each one maybe handles it a little bit differently. Who has okay. another question? That's okay. Okay. I have a question. Go right ahead. I would like to know that with them taking the flu shot, knowing that the flu breaks down your immunity, would that be easier for them to get the COVID? Yeah, that's, again, a very good question. And um, actually, it's interesting. The way the immune system works is that getting one vaccine does not uh, in any way decrease immunity. It, what it does is it increases the immunity to whatever is being vaccinated with. So the flu, move your, vac your uh, immunity to the influenza. If your immune system can do uh, work well uh, with ever, whatever kind of virus that comes around. Um, interesting as with children, uh, if you recall way back, oops, um, when back with, with hey, I'm having let, me a ask, let me ask you to please put your phones on mute if you're not talking so we don't have to hear your phone ringing. Please put your phone on mute. Thank you. Uh, in, with pediatrics giving children immunizations, they often combine many different vaccines into one shot and because we know that all the vaccines together can actually do a very good job in, in boosting the immune system and they don't counteract each other. So your question is, does the flu shot in any way make you more susceptible to COVID? It's absolutely not. If anything, it makes you safer. So I'm definitely going to get it. All my staff is going to get it. And I... I really hope and pray that 100% of our participants get it as well, because so I'm mostly concerned about their safety and health. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Who has a question? Okay. Uh, my question is, if you uh, get the coronavirus and you go through the process of 14 days or whatever, and you uh, get better, can you catch it again? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, and, and, and that's a $64,000 question. Um, <laughs> and a lot of researchers are looking at that, they're studying that, uh, and the, uh, the short answer is so far it looks like good news it looks like for the vast majority of people, it, it tends to give you immunity for at least a significant period of time. Uh, if not, it could be months, it could be years. But at this point, at this point it looks like the vast majority of people are not, are not vulnerable to getting it again. So once you get it, you should probably be fairly immune, at least for a period of time. That's something that people are researching and time will really tell how often, uh, if, 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 the, if any, 
people actually get a, a reinfection. We don't think it, ha it happens much at all, but um, we don't know for sure. Fingers all right, crossed. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, great question. Who has another question? I asked another one uh, about this about this voting thing. Uh, uh, the senior citizen like myself is, have a problem getting back and forth to the tolls now. Uh, when I was I had a car, I could get back and forth like I wanted, and uh, I, I have moved. I still got my voting card that I had at my other address, but uh, I sent off for another one. Uh, and we'll uh, pay for transportation to, to people to go vote. Uh, you know, uh, cause uh, they say they're having trouble with the postage, and uh, mm -hmm. they I don't know whether they're going to be able to, you know, take care of all that mail coming through or not. I don't know. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. I wish we could. You you have no idea, <laughs> and I think I know that voice. You have no idea how badly I wish Pace could take anybody that needed a ride to the polls. But because we are a nonprofit organization, we cannot participate as an organization in any kind of political activities. Mm. And taking people to the polls would be considered a political activity. What I'm going to recommend, because I know my church does it, and I imagine there are lots of other churches around town that are doing it, is wherever you live, well, first of all, you you probably need to do a change of address through the elections office um, right. so that it, so you can vote somewhere near your house. And then I would contact a church that's nearby, because a lot of churches are participating in that Souls to the Polls. And they are providing transportation for people. Now, I don't know if COVID is going to change all of that, but I suspect that they are going to have people who have volunteered to help transport folks who don't have transportation to the polls. Okay. So first thing I would say is, you know, get your address changed. Um, don't, be, don't be afraid of the absentee ballots, especially if you can get it in early. Um, a lot of people I know are starting to think about that. Uh, the election office, again, can help you uh, by getting your uh, uh, absentee ballot application, which if on the day of the election you choose to go ahead and go down there to vote, all you have to do is throw the absentee ballot in the trash can. So it doesn't make you have to use it just because you requested one. Does that okay. make sense? Yes, plenty, okay. plenty. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. it. Thank you for asking the question. Anybody else with questions? Yeah, I got to know. Okay. Well, you know, like we get mail in the, get mail all the time that uh, we could have an increase in our Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, what should we do? Just don't worry about that and let PACE handle all that. Please let PACE handle all of that. There are so yeah. many folks out there trying to get you to join their insurance plan. Uh, thinking mm -hmm. that you don't understand that PACE is also your insurance. And then yeah. if you mess around and say the wrong thing to them over the phone or turn in any kind of paperwork, they're going to sign you up for their plan and it's going to kick you out of PACE. Yes, ma'am. I heard mm -hmm. that. I appreciate that, Carl. You know, yes. a, whole lot yes. of the, a whole lot of that is really tempting what they do, you know. They'll try to get because I, like I like to mess my life insurance up like that one time. Oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. Guess, they are out there trying their best. Yes, ma'am. That would be all for me. <laughs> well, if you think of another one, you don't hesitate to ask. Those are been good questions. Anybody else with a question? Ursula. Uh-huh. I got one more question. If we Go get right the survey, like if we get the survey, we mm -hmm. about, about to face for what? Okay, I'm going to let Adria take that question. Adria? Yes, so if you get the survey, do you take it back to pace? Was that your question? Yeah, do you mail it back to pace? Okay, so when you get the survey in the mail, 
there will be an envelope that comes with it where the postage is paid, so you don't have to add any postage, any stamps, or anything like that. You can put the survey back in that envelope and just put it in the mail, and it will actually go back to Medicare. But okay. if for some reason you lose that envelope or you just feel more secure, then you can definitely send it to PACE um, or, or give us a call and we can arrange to have it picked up. And we can mail it back to PACE if you lose that envelope. But probably the quickest thing to do is just put it right back in that envelope that comes with it uh, and then okay. uh, mail it off and it will go right back to Medicare. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You guys have got some good questions. What other questions do you have? I have a question, and I would like to know the questionnaire. Is it as important as the census? <laughs> oh, boy, that's a good one. So I will say that from my perspective, I would like both of them completed. I think both of them needs to be a priority. However, they both serve two totally different purposes. The census, as you know, helps determine uh, what kind of schools we're going to have, libraries, transportation. The census really speaks for our entire community in terms of what resources we will get for our entire community, healthcare being one of them. Whereas the HOSM survey that Adria was talking about, that is telling Medicare what you, the individual, needs are and how PACE might best help you with the PACE resources. So you see one is about everybody in our community and the other one is about you person and both are very important so i would i would not pick one over the other i'd say they both are equally important thank you you're welcome other questions Hello, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Since this is being recorded, is there some way we can go back and listen to the conversation again? Absolutely. Nidra, can you speak to that? Or Adria, one of you? Uh, I can speak to it. We do have a YouTube channel. Um, if you're not familiar, um, if you go into YouTube and search Pace of the Triad, we have a separate page on YouTube that has a number of um, different recordings that we have uploaded that you can hear. Um, the last two or in May, I know at least the last town hall meeting that we had should be on there along with other messages. And what we could possibly do if you'd like is we could, um, you know, maybe send a link to you if you have if someone has trouble finding it if you would just give us a call at the office and say I'm not able to find it we can try to text a link to your email a link to that page or to that recording great thank you very much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any um, more questions go ahead you go right ahead Uh, I was just wondering when will the link be available, like tomorrow? So this is Adria. What I typically like to do is um, take some time to make sure that I edit the, the recording to make sure that we're not um, risking anyone's private health information. Um, so usually it's about 24 hours before the link is available. And if you do have problems finding Pace of the Triad on YouTube, uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, um, whatever you call Pace, you can ask for Adria Smith, and I will be happy to help you uh, to walk through YouTube and find the link. Thank you. Absolutely. Any 
Any more questions? When are we going to have the next town meeting? <laughs> Nidra, do we have one scheduled, the next one yet? We don't have the date set yet. Um, I will let you all know that September is National PACE Month. Um, and so throughout the United States, PACE programs all over will be, you know, recognizing and hopefully um, getting some um, publicity and knowledge about PACE in the community. So we will get that date set and it will be published in our newsletter, which is scheduled to be mailed um, late next week. So you should get your newsletter in the next couple of weeks and it will have the date posted on there. Very good, very good. Any more questions? Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How often is the air quality check at pace? The air quality checked at pace. Huh? Well, I know that it's checked twice a year as a routine check that's done. It's also checked whenever anyone has any suspicion of any kind of issue related to smell within the organization. Um, but if you're asking if we have it checked weekly or daily, daily or anything like that, no. Routinely twice a year and then certainly as needed. Uh, this organization, when it was when the building was remodeled, if you will, which would have, was about ten years ago, uh, we made sure that we equipped it with some of the finest types of um, materials, up to date materials, if you will. It did not have the same things that it had when it was a big lots building. Um, we certainly upgraded all of the materials related to the building. Other questions? The other comment that I'll make about the building too, and I don't know how many of you will remember Mr. Bill. Uh, Bill comes to the building every day and does a very thorough walkthrough of the building, looking for anything that may be out of order. Uh, he's, he's kind of like our um, facilities man. So he's checking different things throughout the building when he does his walk around to make sure things are like they should be. Any more questions before we dismiss? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh -uh. Now, when will the store be open for participants to purchase different items from the store? Oh boy, oh boy, the store. <laughs> Woo -wee. I don't know. I'll just be honest with you. Um, we, we definitely want to get it back open because so many of you all have worked so hard at home with your different activity packets and you got your pace books. Uh, so we definitely want you to be able to use it, but we're just not ready yet to reopen it, and I honestly don't know when we will be. But it will it will reopen again. It may be in a different location, possibly outside, as a thought. Um, but we're just not quite ready yet. Thank you for asking about that. Uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. Are you getting uh, a lot of donations or? Any at all during this time for the store? Donation for the store? Yes. No, yes. And we have not requested donations. We really want to be careful right now about I'm accepting sure. things. So we're we're not asking yes. anybody, and we don't we're not accepting any donations oh, okay. at this time. Yes, ma'am. Sure. We're not accepting anything okay. at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question about the donations. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where, where do you think you'll start taking donations? 
It's really hard to say, but I'm going to go ahead on and, and venture out and say whenever this pandemic is over and everyone feels safe enough um, accepting. I'll be honest with you, I was up in my attic uh, when I was at home and looking at stuff that I kept saying, one of these days I'm going to get up there and bring those to pay, some of the things that my mother and my grandmother uh, just loved, and I just could not find myself parting with them and realize that I'm running out of space and I got to do something with it. But uh, it's, we just can't, we can't, not even from me, uh, accept things from the outside. It's just too dangerous right now. So again, I would say once the pandemic is over with and everybody feels comfortable, and we just don't know when that's going to be yet. Um, you know, I've heard people say a year from now, I've heard people say when the vaccine is out and everyone has access to it, but nobody seems to know when that vaccine will be ready. So it's just too it's too hard to call that one. Because I got some, I got some donations. Oh, you do? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to need you to hold on to it for a while, okay? Okay. All right. Anything else? Well, Ursula. Yes. What are the donations to the or beads, jewelry beads? Yeah, yeah. I've got a bunch of jewelry and not even jewelry at this time. Nothing from the outside. I got a bunch of beads that you can make jewelry out of. Yeah, I know, but necklaces, yeah, it's just it's just hard at this time to take anything that's not already in the building that has. Because see, one of the things you have to realize has occurred here at the site is we've had this process called um, deep sanitizing occur here at the building. And so what they did is they came in over the weekend and they did this deep fogging throughout the building that took the entire weekend to do, this deep sanitize things. And so it would not be a good idea for us to bring things in from the outside and, and mess up that, that sanitizing that we've already done. And we'll be doing that on a regular basis. So I just think we need to just kind of sit back and let things uh, settle down and get this vaccine in and get going again with donations. Anything else before we dismiss? Okay, well, I'm gonna do you guys like I did my staff and I'm gonna say that uh, I'm gonna close this out with a prayer. But those of you all who may not be um, interested in hearing the prayer, feel free to go ahead and, and, and leave the call now. Just go ahead and hang up, and uh, I'll do the prayer to dismiss us. Okay, let us bow our heads. God, you are the maker of heaven and earth. You created each and every one of us. There is nothing that you do not see. There is not a thought or a feeling that I have that I can hide from you. You know all of my fears and all of my hopes. In light of this pandemic, you are deeply acquainted with every plan that has been canceled, every hope that has been deferred, every tear that has been shed, every single life that's been lost. Even though we are experiencing isolation, you are not distant from us. You are right here by us. Lord, we confess that we are weak and easily forget how much you care for us. We know that you are big, but forget that you are intimately aware of the details of our life. God, the problems of this virus are pervasive, affecting nearly every aspect of our lives. We give over to you our worries and our fears. We do trust you, God. Please help us. We thank you for your fatherly care. We thank you that when we are weak, you are strong. You do not shame us for our fears, but encourage us towards confidence in you. God, we thank you for the protection you have already shown us. We thank you for the ways people in our city, our country, and our world have come together to care for one another. 
God, we ask you to continue to protect us. We specifically ask you to protect, protect those who are most vulnerable among us, the elderly and the people who are immune compromised. We ask for their safety and their strength. We ask you to guard their spirits against loneliness and provide encouragement for them. Be close to their caregivers and guard them with your powerful love. Amen. First of all, we want to thank you, Lord, for all thank those you. that are standing in place to help us. Thank you thank all very you much. All. Thank you all oh, for thank calling you all. in so much. Y'all First take care of now. Y'all. Okay, First thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I, I, hear, I hear somebody calling my name. I'm going to stay on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who called my name? I, I did. Okay. I sure did miss you. I miss you, too. I know who you are, too. We're not going to say your name, but I miss you, too. You take care of yourself, okay? Yes, and that was good prayer. Thank you, darling. We'll see you on the next, or hear you on the next call. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.